Morning all. Let's go over another very interesting Mikhail Tal game. So this was against Lev Polgiavsky in the 1959 USSR Championship round three, <laughs> as it shows there. So E4 from Mikhail Tal. Polgiavsky played the Sicilian defense. Knight F3, we have an open Sicilian. <clears throat> A6, we have bishop g5, knight bd7, bishop c4, and now queen a5. This this is a interesting early queen move. Of course, it's hitting the bishop, and it also means knight takes e4 has to be addressed. Well, there's a move which does both. Queen d2, it unpins the knight. It protects the bishop. We have e6. White here castles, tower castles on the king side. Maybe it would justify the queen a5 a little bit if white castled queen side. Uh, so anyway, bishop e7. We have rook ad1, knight c5, putting pressure on e4 here. Rook fe1, bishop d7. So black's not immediately castling himself anywhere. And possibly with the king stuck in the center, there might have been a really, uh, technically there might have been a really dangerous move here. Uh, Tau played a3, which seems good as well, you know, for b4. But technically it seems, um, this position, knight f5, it seems actually this might be possible. Uh, for example, if takes, this is a really dangerous for black, this position. For example, like this. It's it's very dangerous. Yeah, the king hasn't castled yet, so the king's stuck in the center. Knight f5, maybe is a is a thematic kind of choice. Um, the best line like this is not particularly good for black. This position, a pawn down, it's better for white. So that's interesting that knight f5 wasn't chosen at all. Uh, here we have a3. But it does seem to just basically say, well, what's the queen doing there on a5 here? b4 is now threatened. We have the queen stepping back. And now b4, so really trying to gain a lot of tempo here. Knight a4. So the queen's also attacking the bishop here. Bishop can't move back without losing the knight. So knight takes a4. Bishop takes a4. But you'll notice with bishop takes a4, What's the weakness of the last move? It's not supporting certain square e6. Guess what Tal plays here? Okay. He plays a bishop sack, yeah. It's dangerous for black. I mean, even though black's getting the c2 pawn potentially, Tal is not worried. This position, the king is really stuck in the center now. Even though black's nabbing the pawn, it tells pretty chilled out about this position. Okay, he's a piece down, but king stuck in the center. Uh, what to do about potential queen exchange? You don't really want the queens exchanged off. There's a nice move here, which is possible, and it's difficult for black to harass the queen from uh, just queen d4. It's centralizing and it's keeping some threats here. In fact, not just knight takes g7, but also rook c1. It's also, by the way, holding on uh, to this rook because uh, there, there is a battery here. So, you know, maybe black could consider even taking on d1 if the queen, say, went to f4 at some point. Uh, so the queen's holding on to d1 and threatening rook c1 and knight takes g7. So yeah, it's it's interesting. We have king f7, and now rook c1 is like getting out of the firing line of the queen and bishop. Um, it's technically it seems possible that white could play knight takes g7 like this. It's possible, but um, I'm not sure it brings such. A big advantage this kind of variation even though if we win the queen there's a lot of material being invested here well it's only slight 
slightly better. So knight takes g7 may have been possible. Uh, but uh, we have rook c1. Okay, with the queen attacking the knight, actually this is kind of ignored here. I mean, we just have e5 counterattacking black's knight. D takes, queen takes, lending support now, enough support for e6. And threatening things like knight takes g7 for sure, with queen e7 to follow. Now, black maybe panicked here a little. He wanted to simplify, and there is a way of getting the queens off. In a way, getting the queens off. So it looks like a really nifty move. Queen takes f2 check. Yeah. With the idea of forking the king and queen. And returning back a piece, basically. It seems as though it's a really scary position. But before we go into the game continuation. So that's the game continuation. It seems as though queen d5 may be the best move here. Yeah. And, for example, bishop takes, queen takes. Here. Yeah. This seems possible. This all seems possible. Where black's got two bishops for a rook, and it's about equal, basically. Yeah, but maybe, you know, the opponent was keen to get the queens off and return the piece. Maybe hoping for a draw. Just So we have uh, knight g4 check, and maybe black's hoping just to draw now. Play bishop takes g5. There's only three pieces, right? How can the black king be in trouble here? Equal on pawns. In fact, it's symmetrical pawn structure. If we look at the pawn structure, it's a good recipe for a draw, surely. We have knight e6. Unfortunately, there is a bit of nagging pressure here after knight e6. Unfortunately for black. We have rook h e8 pinning the knight. Seems logical. Rook e3 giving the option for rook g3 check. We have rook a c8. And now cutting off the king with rook f1 means that rook g3 might be more dangerous now. If rook g3 check had been played instead, then just simply king f7, it's about equal. So rook f1 makes rook g3 more dangerous. Bishop b5 seemingly attacking that rook. Um, here, I mean, maybe best is actually to play bishop d7. For example, check. I mean, there's only three pieces. What can possibly be that bad? This position, it's only a slight advantage for white. Okay. But black has invested another pawn here to calm things down. But in the game, yeah, he, he doesn't want to invest another pawn. Just bishop b5. So surely, Tao's only got three pieces here. How can he whip up an attack? Well, check. The king's awkwardly going to h6. Uh, now here, with the knight hanging, knight takes g7 looks very logical. Rook f8, trading off more, for sure, because surely there's not enough here uh, <laughs> for white to do anything, at least, surely. Well, we have rook e1. Rook e6 check is now a pain as a possibility, among other things. Now, rook f6 at least seems to address rook e6 check. The con move h3 now is played. And the unfortunate thing here is in this position, rook g6, there's always knight f5 check. That's a right pain, bringing the king up. So it's not ideal as an example. We have rook c2 here. Now, again, here, Probably bishop d7 to try and cut this possibility of knight f5 check in, in lines was necessary. For example, here, this would have been okay, this construction by black, where f5 is covered, and it looks as though white shouldn't be able to do anything. But in the game, 
After this h3, we get rook c2. And funny enough, um, this is this is getting into uh, deep trouble. Rook c2. I mean, seriously deep trouble. Mm. Uh, <laughs> white actually what does white play do you think in this position if I give you five seconds starting from now okay white plays rook e4 threatening a mate in one with rook h4 and it's it's unfortunate to be able to it's 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 very difficult to parry this um if rook g6 here for example knight f5 check and rook h4 is checkmate so the only way to parry this it seems is rook c4 but now, just rook e5 threatens mate in one again with rook h5 check. We have rook c1 check, king h2, and black resigned here because actually uh, he's at least losing material. He might not be getting mated. If black played rook g6, it's not. Um, it doesn't appear to be a checkmate, but it seems to be losing the exchange for black. Like a five check, according to engines here, we can just like win an exchange with knight e7 check. So we, we take that exchange, the exchange up should be enough to win. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, rook e5, that was it. Of the you know, of the check king h2. This was it here, the final position. The game ended there. Uh, it it seems as though the black king was still in trouble, just with Tal having only three pieces on the board. He still creates some problems. Um, my one question now in doing this is: Was it necessary for the finesse rookie four first? What about rookie five in this position? Now this is an interesting question. Tell sequence rook e4 and then rook e5. What he did actually do uh, when in this position after rook c2, what Tell did <clears throat> with rook e5, sorry, with rook e4, threatening this mate, <clears throat> was in fact encouraged black to play rook c4, which is create a weakness of the last move. It blocks the bishop from e2. So now rook e5 is actually more effective because there's no bishop e2 to stop rook h5. So that's the nifty part of rook e4 to e5. It turns out, from an engine perspective actually, that rook e5 is more accurate. It's actually more accurate. Let black play bishop e2 because now, lo and behold, guess what we have here? We have rook e4. This is also a weakness of the last move, leaving a bishop on e2 here, threatening mate. So if black tries to defend the mate, uh, he'll lose the bishop. You know, rook c4, rook takes e2. So basically, they're both completely crushing moves in this position. Uh, here, with, with, I mean, this position here, if, if we go like this, then black's actually getting mated. So rook c4 to try and stop the rook h4. So it turns out, yeah, this position's crushing with either rookie four first or rookie five first they both create terrible weaknesses of the last moves so i thought i should point that out i hope you find that interesting i did a little bit anyway okay comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much